Hi everyone, my name is Adogs and thank you all for coming to my channel. So today we're going over a Galactic B Hero set profile post set 13. So before I show you the deck itself, I just want to go over a couple of things. The first thing what I want to go over is just uh, what the deck was missing for it to become relevant in the meta. And then also uh, just the new cards that uh, B Hero has got in the form of a promo and the set 13 support. So first of all, what were B Heroes missing? So the first thing was in Walkers of Sun Base Searcher. So the only base searcher that we have currently at the moment that we can run on the deck is the Abbott Robust and Habitable Zone. The only problem with both of those cards is that they are not heroes. So so they can't be searchable from the base. Now if we don't draw into our Ebon Robust or a Habitable Zone, um, it kind of makes the deck flop over and die because um, we can't use any of our skills. We can't use the old solos and we can't get the crit from the others. So and these are very very important. So if we don't get those, our um, deck is just very very sad. Secondly, base celebration. So even though if we do to say example open, you know, a habitable zone or even to even robust, the only problem with that is that because they are allow you to add it to hand and not directly play it from the deck, uh, the deck only gets the free bases on turn 4. Now compared to other decks in the meta, uh, decks can kill up much faster, which is really bad for us. So if we had a way of accelerating our bases faster, we could actually become a lot scarier much quicker, which is honestly something that the deck really needs. And then lastly, a final push. So what I mean by this is obviously, you know, B heroes uh, do 4 attacks every turn. But unless we open, you know, just for example, a Haven Robust in a Solus in one column that we can switch for Tech Florials, or even a Suffering, um, everything else will essentially only hit for 25. So we kind of need to open those cards. Now, again, um, this is on Persona Run, sorry. So if we're swinging for 25, for example, at the opponent's Vanguard, it's a 15k shield. So if it's essentially just free 15k shields and just a PG for the Vanguard, um, it's very easy to guard. So we need more pressure for the deck to actually hit through and actually take games. So if we had a final push, um, it could definitely help the deck a lot. Again, it can be something as simple as again like extra multi attacks or just giving the Vanguard a guard pump. So what did B heroes get um, in set 13 and promo wise? So the first card on the very right. Um, is auto on the radio circle. At the end of your turn, you can cost to scout this unit and a card will be here in its card name from hand to base. Draw a card, choose a base from your auto zone, and stand it. The second one in the middle is at the end of the value unit, attacked. If your Vanguard will be here in its card name, still plus one, retire this unit. Choose a scouted card from your base, put it into hand. Choose up to one base card from your hand or drop and put it into the auto zone as rest. And then lastly, the one on the, on the very left is when this unit is placed in the radio circle. If you have a Vanguard B here in its card name and a base was not one of the orders on this turn, cost Soul Boss 1 and discard a card from your hand, search the deck for up to one base card, put it into the order zone and shuffle the deck. Then at the end of the battle, unit attacked, if you have a Vanguard B here in its card name and your order zone has three or more bases, cost Cannabis 1, which one of this unit, choose one of your scanner cards and call it the Rigo Circle. So we've got these three cards. These three cards all together definitely help um, increase the deck's consistency and power by quite a lot. So, first of all, we now have a way to scout cards and our sides from our Vanguard is on grade 2. Because aside from that, we had no other ways of scouting cards from hand into the order zone, which is actually very crucial to constantly, um, constantly keep our base healthy. This definitely helps a lot. And also being able to stand a base as well is really good too. Because again, you know, when we're using our base to pull stuff out, um, we obviously can't use the base during the opponent's turn as a rest. So but it, by turning it back into the standing position, it allows us to pretty much um, utilize a base that was full potential, being able to you know call something out and then also call something going circle, you know, both in one base because of this great frame. Next to the great two here, it allows us to plus. So again we can now choose scatter cards from our uh, base to uh, hand which is very very good. Then also we can play a base from drop or hand as 
rest. So if we open a you know a base and the hand sides from the grave one that we can search for for the right line, um, yeah, we can actually get two bases on turn two. But the other really important part is being able to scout cards from our um, being able to scout cards from our base to hand because. For example, uh, we can do a couple of like plays where we can actually set certain key cards, hero, big, uh, hero key cards, into our base, and then we can just grab them directly from the base because of the grade two. So again, it actually helps a lot. Um, the most you know big significant one is Persona Rides. So very very good card. And then lastly, this card is the most important out of the three, honestly, in my own opinion. Sorry, uh, because. So this is a this is a base searcher, but it also has here in its card name, which means if we find it off our base, um, we now have a base searcher we can use for next turn, which is really really good. Um, also, because uh, it enables multi attacks, we can now can get those kind of fun pushes in. Because again, once we have three bases set up, um, we get to we can kind of also retire itself, choose a card from our base. And call it the Rio Circle. Now, this is also really good utility wise, too, because we can either set up you know, big, stronger attacks, we can um, set up more multi attacks if we have a couple of this grade 2 into the base. We can call that something like this grade 2 to add a card from our base to our hand. We can also call out you know, defensive, op defensive options, you know, like, uh, like 15k shield. So, this does quite a lot. This is like it does more than just multi attacks it can kind of set things up too. This is honestly overall a really, really good card. So going over that, let's look at what the deck looks like now. So this is pretty much what B Hero is looking like in set 13. So we always have the 4 Persona Rides, we have 2 of the Grade 2, because again, you know, he's really good, but you don't want to open too many because it gets kind of cloggy. Uh, we do have the base, you know, because you kind of you kind of need the base you know, for that to run. But three of the shield guy, he's still very important, he's our shield, but he also generates soul. And in this deck we actually go through quite a bit, so he's definitely uh, good in mitigating that. Uh, we have again four of the kind of like a big beefy attackers, but also he allows us to put cards from our drop back into the base so we can recycle key pieces that we need to use the next turn, or you know, cards that we can put on the soul so we can fetch it off for our grade two here. So again, this is a very, very versatile, very good card. And we've talked about these great tools already, and then obviously the direct four real, um, again, just at a minimum allows us to do four attacks. Now, one good thing about this deck is even if you run out of counter blast, you can still keep doing at least four attacks every turn because the four real only will do soul blast once to exchange position of two cards in the same column. So, um, even when out of steam, we technically don't run out of steam because we can still do multi attacks, which is really good. So, even for example, if we get damage denied, if we can push hard to early game, which is, you know, it can sometimes be possible if we open two um, bold solos, we have two bases set up, which is, you know, pretty pretty relatively easy now. Um, yeah, we can just, uh, if we get damage tonight, we probably get free, you know, free damage, for example. We can just Foreo, you know, just do some full consistent attacks. And then when we get our, you know, our counter blast from the immune rushing us back, we can start, you know, combo extending. You know, if we have a few of these grade two set up in the uh, base, we can do like five, six, seven attacks. So it's really, really good. So overall, the deck kind of feels like a. It feels complete. I feel like it. I feel like it has everything that's needed for it to become a competitive deck now, um, which is really good because um, B heroes are honestly just. You know, this, when they first came out in set six, um, I. I don't think it's a thought was really cool, you know, I really liked it, but there were a lot of glaring issues. So it's good to see that they've kind of fixed up the fixed up the problems that the heroes had, and it is now honestly a very scary deck, which I really love. Now I do want to just go over um, kind of a high roll play that you can do with this deck. Um, and if you do set up this high roll, you can essentially get three bases set up on turn two. So I'll just show you that now. Okay, so let's just say this is our hand when we're on grade 2. So we've opened two bases and we've also opened the Broad Furbus and the MS Dania. So this, uh, with this combo, I'm just going to show you how to get to those three bases. So what we do first is we call the MS Dania, we then Soul Blast 1. Let's 
start our base. To search our deck directly for a, directly from sorry, search our deck for a base and direct the player. Then we use heal our base, the top seven. Search for three heroes. Put the hand and let's go to the soul. Next, we'll play a base from here. It's now our second base. Again, top seven. Alright, so we get three out. So one, two, three. So one to hand, those get scouted. And then, we know we go into the battle phase. Let's see the grow two. And then the battle, sort plus one. Attack itself, we scout a card from our base to hand. So we'll just go at this to hand. We then choose a base from our drop and then play it to the water zone. And then, because we do that, we get the top seven. Choose from heroes. It's hero time. <laughs> as, <laughs> as my friend said, it's hero time. But that's how you get the free bases in the uh, B heroes on a grade two if you open those free cards. Now again, obviously, if you don't open these free cards, it's fine. As long as you open uh, the grade two here in the base, you have two chances of finding the grade two. If you do find that, then everything's fine. But yes, that's pretty much how you get to free bases on turn two which again very good and now allows you to you know get your stolas set up you know it's now 28 beat stick on grade two really good now i just want to show you another play this is pretty much how to um you know get get your cards from you know you drop the base and then adding you know that key card from your base Alrighty. so this is a percent right turn you know we percent right our gunners for sure one now, this turn, what I'm going to show you is how we're going to get um, our Dianos from our soul, get into the drop, and then put it back into the uh, base, so then add that Dianos from base to hand. So essentially, because it's a percent right for next turn. So, what we do here is we call the MS Dunny, then assault last one. Just got a card from my hand. We search the deck for a base. Top seven. So we'll just go with these for each, doesn't really matter. Anything is that we know we're still blasting out the Diana during the main phase. We then we we'll say we add the direct four of the hand. These two go to the base. What we do next is we rest the base to discard our bottom solos. This is very important. So then call out the bold Fervus. When we do this, we use the skill of our bold Fervus, Cannibal Sting 1, to call it back. To then choose the Lianos to put into the base. Then what we do, you know, for this we'll get plus 5k. We swing over it and we saw the last one. Stack itself to choose a card from our base deck to hand. So, what we do is get the Persona Ride to hand, and now we can Persona Ride next turn. And that's how you get a Persona Ride for next turn. So, what about that Goth Alien GR? <laughs> yes, I'll give you that Goth Alien GR too. Expecting hero time soon. Yeah, we have a hero time soon. <laughs> and that's it. So, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and while you're down there, why not subscribe and hit the notification bell so when I upload another video, you will be notified. Also, we are only now 3 subscribers away from hitting 250, so again, there is still time to choose for the deck. Please don't make me play Eugene, unfortunately. Um, 
one person's ever thrown the community and all the community wants me to play Eugene now. So, uh, you know, please make me not play it, but if I have to play it, I'll play it. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> hey, dogs out. <laughs> See ya.